Hey guys, Adam back here in the Aeroworks workshop and took a few days off, did a little bit of work here, got some of the projects done I wanted to uh, get done. Let's go over what we got done so far. So you heard me in the last video talking about the doors, lots of work there. Uh, I'm not going to get into it again, but boy, there's a, it's a very tedious project. Um, all the riveting, the drilling, the deburring, taking it apart, fitting and all that. But we do now have two working doors with pistons installed. So that is a cool milestone, uh, getting these doors done again all installed and ready to go. Uh, next thing we're gonna be working on here, I've been working with Viking on, um, they've got great documentation on their website. And one of the things I suggested to them was, you know, you've got the Viking 195 on a Super Duty, why not do up a firewall uh, forward, kind of a uh, systems layout. And so I sent them uh, just a screenshot of the print and here we've got the firewall layout now. So. Uh, they're, they're great to work out uh, work with over there. They get stuff done very quickly So now we've got a recommended spot for our harness pass-through throttle cable our positive negative cables and our coolant and uh, gearbox uh, Level overflow vents and such so you know and every plane's a little different on, on the super duty you kind of think about all the hot stuff is on the right side of the plane. You've got the turbo, you got the exhaust and all this stuff going on over here. Probably don't want as many wires and things on this side. So where you might have your pass-throughs up here on a, on a 130, on a 195 it makes more sense to actually put them over here. So we're going to have the positive negative leads uh, going through here, the pass-throughs. We're going to have the pass-through for the... Uh, Computer unit is going to go right through here along with any of our sensor wiring and then we'll have our overflow bottles up top um, And that should be a nice clean install now in the last video I talked about my avionics trays and bays and I actually had these two flipped around and Thanks to uh, Alyssa for clarifying and I should have been a little bit more clear in the last video But this this tray here the one with all the holes in it is actually laid out and pre-drilled for all of your things like your terminal blocks, your uh, solenoids, these holes are already all in there. So basically you drop some AN hardware in and you're pretty much ready to start wiring stuff. So I did have these flipped around and I was mentioning hoses and things. The one with the holes in it, that's your battery tray. And again, it's got a lot of stuff pre-drilled. You can see here the two holes are pre-drilled, matches right up. So all of your positive, negative terminal strips will be going here. You need your pass-through wiring, you can go in and out of the holes. And you can get grommets or, or plastic bushings for these, of course. And then, of course, we've got the, um, the batteries will be up here on the top. Now, because the pass-throughs are going to be over there, we'll have to come through, and then we'll probably just use some Adele clamps and bring those over here and drop them in where they need to go. Um, and then we can start working from there on all the rest of the wiring. We did also get uh, some more stuff done in the back here. Got the... Uh, rear armrest all riveted in. That's all done. Starting to kind of fit up the uh, mullion there for the uh, post that covers up the control arm. And um, got that all riveted, out, riveted outside here. All done here. Did leave a couple holes blank here. I actually put tape over those uh, just so I didn't accidentally rivet those. Those are actually for the uh, channel that goes on there. And those are A4 rivets, by the way. A5s on the armrest down below. So we're going to keep plugging away. We'll probably start laying out and uh, drilling some holes in the firewall to get these pass-throughs put in and get our bottles mounted up. And then we'll start uh, on some basic wiring for uh, engine wiring to the avionics bay. Uh, we are also finishing up the uh, backbone of our uh, panel, which is right over here. You can see we have our, our other cutout that we used before. We're just using it as a template. Everything is exactly the same except for these two pieces are now down here. But as far as the whole layout, so we're, we're back drilling the, uh, the Zenith panel. We're gonna get all this cut out so that we can get that installed into the uh, panel area. And then we'll be able to start uh, getting our actual panel installed and start doing the cross-connect wiring and figure out where we want to put things. 
One thing I wouldn't mention, and, and you know, going to something like the Zenith Homecoming or an air show or visiting another builder, you know, we see all these planes online and everywhere, but uh, one thing you don't always get to see is, you know, how they're wired up inside, where the fuel lines are ran and things like that. And sometimes it's, uh, it's good to just take a look at the inside of things because you will find that you'll pick up little tips and tricks and uh, look at how people have run their, their cabling, their hoses and things like that. When you get to the inside, one thing that always bugs me is you see these planes that are built, um, they're basically a brand new airplane, and then you see wires zip tied hanging down and hoses you know, running along the sidewall. We gotta do a better job at, at making that stuff look better. You know, Take the time, figure out the route, um, you know, lay the components out in here, um, there are some channels that you can run things into. Um, obviously, you're not going to run it inside the control channel, but this channel you can. We know that the fuel lines are typically going to come through here, but do they go down here? Or do they go backwards into the firewall or excuse me, the baggage bay? You know, that all depends on the engine that you have chosen. However, uh, you know, take the time to kind of lay things out. Think of all the components you have and, and then, uh, you know, before you start mounting things permanently, Take a look at where you need to go, what needs to get there. Do you have the room to do it? Do you need to put another bracket in or a clamp or something like that? So just a little tip from, an, uh, from a new builder, um, things that I'm experiencing that I'm taking a little bit more time on, researching, looking at you know, the way other people have done it or coming up with my own ways because I want this thing to look nice when it's done. I don't want a bunch of stuff just hanging in the cockpit. Hey guys, if you're ever working on um, something like this, like a plate or something that you've got to drill exact holes for and you're kind of fumbling around trying to hold all the pieces up there let me show you a quick method that i use um it can be used on pretty much anything that you have a mounting plate comes in handy for those uh, power strips that always have the two screw holes in the back you're trying to measure and get the spacing just right this is a technique you can use for that too basically the easy way to do that is just uh take the device you want to make a whole template for over to the copy machine your printer at home your scanner what have you and make a one-to-one -one copy of it, pretty straightforward. This will make an exact hole template for you. You can make as many as you need. You can punch holes in them. Uh, it's easy to tape onto things, and you can see that it's basically a one-to-one -one scale uh, version. Just simply cut it out, and then uh, place it on what you need to put your holes in, and you're good to go. Like I said, and this works on all kinds of devices. Well, I got some preliminary wiring done. Um, this is those um, battery and starter solenoids. Um, this is, a good, of course, done per like the Viking directions. I'm, I'm kind of on a holding pattern right now because, as you may or may not know, I was originally going to use uh, the vertical power system, which is a solid state system uh, that provides you basically inputs and outputs and you can program them to do pretty much anything. They'll enunciate on your screens and all that good stuff. But I'm running into a little issue because the Viking engine uses a dual power setup. Um, we kind of came up with a drawing to try and do that with, you know, maybe splitting the batteries and having one for the vertical. So we're, we're, we're still in the in, in flux in that, trying to figure out exactly how to make that work without creating a too complicated system. Um, I may just end up abandoning the vertical power and sticking with the way that uh, Viking designs and lays out their system with uh, traditional breakers because it seems like I'm kind of bypassing all the features of the vertical power anyhow. So we're going to take a break on that um, for right now. Like I said, we did get um, the power lugs installed. We got our overflow bottles installed. Uh, one thing I want to show you a diagram here that's important uh, on the coolant level, you have to have the coolant level uh, bottle lower than the actual uh, overflow nipple right here. Otherwise, you'll get a, a backflow situation. So what I did there, and I know it's kind of hard to tell from looking at it like this, but the way I got those the, the battery lower, excuse me, the bottle lower, was basically just 
drilled a hole up in there and lowered that down through that channel there. And then I could just basically thread the nipple back onto the bottle and that'll put that hose down here, which if you follow this over, we're obviously lower than that. So that's how we're gonna do that. And uh, the other one is for the gearbox uh, gear oil and uh, that one's not an issue. Well guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up for today. I uh, got a lot of miscellaneous things going on. I gotta take a quick work trip, uh, but we'll be back at it. And hopefully we'll have some of those power issues worked out by then. And then we can jump back on finishing up that avionics tray and then hopefully getting the panel in along with some of these other loose items i am uh, been talking about in this video. So guys, I hope you're watching. hope you're uh, picking up something or you find it entertaining, whatever. Uh, if you do, make sure you give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate uh, the followers. And uh, again, it's Adam with Airworks, and we'll see you on the next video.